Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a pair of all steel, like Irish, gentlemen's pocket pistols. These are, uh, well they date from approximately the 1830s and they were manufactured by the Rigby Company. Now at the time it was known as uh, John and William Rigby and Company. Um, this company was actually started way back in 1775 by John Rigby Sr. Uh, he created the company, Gunsmith, um, and became known for everything from little pocket pistols like this up to really high quality, high end uh, hunting rifles. He would pass away in 1818 and control of the company would go to his son William Rigby, and then his other son, John Rigby II, or John Rigby Jr., uh, would join the company in the 1820s. And it is during that period that these two pistols were manufactured. So let's take a closer look. Ireland at the time did have a fair amount of street crime, and it was not uncommon for a gentleman of means to carry a pocket pistol, or in this case a pair of pocket pistols, for protection. Now you might wonder, how do we know these are a matched pair? Because these aren't actually serial numbered. However, there's a really cool thing that they have going on here. If we take a close look at this guy, you can see the barrels are actually numbered. And that makes sense for assembly. You've got number one, number two, and number three down there. However, when we go to the other gun, we'll notice that these are numbers four, five, and six. So I suppose it's possible these two weren't originally a pair, although they certainly appear that way, but these were definitely intended to, uh, well, would have been sold as a pair and were intended to be owned and carried as a pair. Now if we take a closer look at what's actually going on here, what looks like gigantic crazy star rifling, uh, those are actually basically just uh, starting cuts because these are muzzle-loaded barrels. So you need to put, you dump a powder charge in, and then you seat a ball and you have to ram it into place. And those uh, star patterns do denote the rifling, but the rifling is not nearly that deep once you get a few millimeters into the barrel. That's just to help you seat a projectile and get it started. Now you may notice uh, one hindrance to firing these would be the fact that there is no trigger. Well, it actually has a trigger, it's a folding trigger. So when you cock the hammer, the trigger presents itself and, uh, and then you can fire. That keeps it nicely out of the way when the gun's in your pocket, keeps it from snagging or bending, uh, although the hammer itself certainly would be a snagging hazard. Now you've got three percussion caps, three percussion nipples there, but you've only got one dealy up here to actually fire them. So when we drop this, okay, so we're firing barrel number uh, four there. Then when you recock the piece, you can actually rotate this into position for number five and number six, and then back to number four. Interestingly, this only rotates clockwise. So I can't push it counterclockwise. It'll only rotate this way. We have a little spring catch there to snap it nicely into position uh, at each firing point. I think the, the reason for the lack of reversibility is you don't want to fire number one and then fire number two and then under stress you go to turn the thing and maybe you turn it backwards the wrong direction and then you're trying to fire a barrel that's already empty. So this means that if you fire and rotate in sequence you will fire all three rounds um, before you unintentionally go to one that's empty. There is some rather nice engraving here on the side on both guns, and they are marked Dublin. Rigby had offices or shops uh, in both Dublin and London at this time. So on the left side here we have uh, the proprietor's names, William and John Rigby. Uh, they would use this nomenclature from the early 1820s uh, through 1866, and in 1866 the company name would go back to just John Rigby. Um, and under that name, by the way, it still exists today, still making really high-end rifles. They, they don't do pocket pistols anymore, they do just uh, sporting rifles. And shotguns, of course. And one last feature to point out is of course the gigantic hole in the, the butt end of the pistol. I uh, believe that's actually for a lanyard. Uh, if you're carrying a pistol in those days, you may very well have been doing it in a rather large coat with rather deep pockets. And uh, that lanyard ring, lanyard loop, gave you a way to have, uh, uh, you know, an easy way to pull the gun out of a deep or uh, otherwise encumbered pocket. So these don't have any, you know, super weird mechanical system to them, but 
they're a bit of an unusual design when we're used to things like little single barrel derringers or maybe pepper box revolvers. This sort of three barrel rotating selector firing bit, I just thought that was really cool and worth taking a look at. Um, Rigby did a number of other guns kind of along these lines. They did also make a four barreled version of this. Uh, they made a two barreled uh, sort of a swivel gun uh, deal where you have two barrels and each one has its own percussion cap and you'd fire one and then you'd rotate the barrel assembly and then you'd have a second round available. So yeah, really kind of the whole uh, the whole range of multi-barrel options from Rigby. And uh, anyway, if you'd like to see more about these two in particular, uh, Rock Island's catalog page has a set of high-res pictures and their description and their value estimate. You can get to that by way of ForgottenWeapons.com down in the description text. Thanks for watching.